Okay, well, we are now approaching the last session of this unique online meeting, and the session is about innovation in the field. We have two presentations. The first one is by Nuno Costa Borgas from Spain. Nuno is the co-founder and scientific director of Embryo Tools in Barcelona, Spain, and he will discuss spindle transfer, clinical applications. The last session is by John Sang from New York. John is the medical director and CEO of the New Hope Fertility Center in New York City, and he is the founder and CEO of Darwin Life. His presentation would be about nuclear transfer, introduction, and technique. So we are all ready to listen to these two presentations, and the end, we'll have the closing remark of the Congress. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Nuno Costa Borges, Scientific Director of Embryo Tools, and uh, I'm very happy to participate in this uh, uh, IPF Worldwide, uh, worldwide uh, Online Congress. So I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. And I'll be, I'll be talking about the project that we are carrying uh, out in the last years. It's about uh, the meiotic spindle transfer technique. So our project aims to uh, validate the safety and the efficiency of this technique. Uh, maternal spindle transfer is a technique that was originally proposed to prevent the transmission of mitochondrial diseases, but we wanted to explore also whether it could be a useful tool uh, to overcome uh, infertility problems related to uh, poor oocyte quality. So, as uh, all we know, IVF treatments can now circumvent many subfertility disorders. However, the efficiency of these treatments is still uh, limited by the number and the quality of the oocytes, among other factors. And it is frequently frequent that um, uh, in some cases, IVF patients uh, uh, present massive embryo development arrest, which persists in uh, repeated IVF cycles. And nowadays, there's no many options for these patients, and usually the problem is attributed to their poor oocyte quality. Uh, this uh, quality of the oocyte is measured by the competence of the oocytes to develop after uh, they have been inseminated. And this developmental competence is mainly dictated by the chromosomal status and the cytoplasmic factors of the oocyte. In, partil in particular, the, the cytoplasm of the oocyte is thought to play a very important role because it's in the cytoplasm that are present all the organelles, RNAs, ribosomes that the embryo inherits from the oocyte and that are thought to play a very important role in the development of the embryo. Uh, in particular, there are several publications that have indicated that these functions at, at cytoplasmic level, uh, meaning that uh, some molecules or factors present in the cytoplasm, like mitochondria, uh, may play an important role in this embryo development, and these functions at this level may have uh, ex may explain some cases of impaired embryo development. Um, knowing this, there were strategies that have been uh, proposed trying to enhance the quality of the oocytes. For example, these experiments that were carried out by the group of Dr. Jacques Cohen by the end of the 90s that were aimed to transfer a small portion of cytoplasm from one donor oocyte and inject it together with the sperm in the patient's uh, oocytes, patients that have had the several previous IVF attempts. And these experiments uh, resulted in live births and uh, there was some improvement in the clinical results. However, uh, the technique was then uh, abandoned because of concerns related to the heteroplasmy that was induced by this uh, heterologous uh, cytoplasmic transfer procedure. 
Later on, there was other uh, um, strategies, uh, another strategy that was proposed um, to improve the quality of the oocytes of patients with uh, repeated IVF failures. That was uh, based on using mitochondria collected from the, the patient's own cells. So this uh, would allow to overcome the problems related to the heteroplasmy. However, and from this technique, uh, it was uh, commercially known as augment. There were live births that were reported. However, the results they were not confirmed in terms of improving the quality of these oocytes. Actually, a randomized uh, pilot trial uh, conducted by EV Group did not show any improvement in the embryo quality of these patients undergoing in vitro fertilization. Um, as, I ex as I explained. So uh, knowing this, it seems that the mitochondria or cytoplasmic transfer per se is not the ideal way of correcting these dysfunctional mitochondria or other cytoplasmic deficiencies that might be present in these poor quality oocytes. And therefore, an approach that could uh, uh, overcome this problem because allows us to replace the entire cytoplasma oocyte would be to transfer the nuclear genome from these affected oocytes into a better quality or a healthier cytoplasm, which is known as uh, mitochondrial replacement uh, therapies or nuclear transfer techniques in general. Uh, this is possible to be done at different developmental stages of the oocyte, for example, a terminal vesicle. We can do it also using polar bodies or transferring pronuclear or a meiotic spindle from one oocyte to another. Uh, from all these techniques, the maternal spindle transfer is one of the mo most promising. And this technique is based on transferring the meiotic spindle from the patient's oocyte into a oocyte from a donor previously inucleated and once reconstructed the oocyte can be inseminated by ICSI and if it develops in a, a good quality blastocyst this blastocyst could be biopsied and if it results to be chromosomally euploid it could be transferred and the resultant the resultant baby would be genetically related to the patient and it would contain the mitochondria from the donor. It's a procedure that is uh, technically uh, demanding. However, if optimized carefully, uh, it is associated with low mitochondrial uh, DNA carryover levels, apart because these manipulations are performed uh, before the oocytes are fertilized. It offers the advantage compared to other techniques that we are manipulating all sites, we are not manipulating embryos. So this is a positive point of view, a positive uh, aspect from an ethical point of view. Um, also, uh, because the oocytes are rested at metaphase two stage, it's easier to coordinate the oocyte that is the donor of this meiotic spindle with the oocyte that is uh, uh, the donor of, this, of the cytoplasm. So this procedure was originally proposed, as I said at the beginning, to prevent the transmission of mitochondrial diseases and a lot of work has been done at the research level. Also primates have been born using this procedure, also the technique, uh, especially the, uh, the group of Dr. Metalipov and the group of Dr. Regli have done a lot of work on this technique uh, to uh, demonstrate that it is a, a, a valid method to prevent the transmission of mitochondrial diseases. And we are also aware about a, a clinical case uh, that was conducted by the group of Dr. Zhang uh, that, um, uh, that was this procedure was applied to prevent the transmission of a mitochondrial disease in 2016. Uh, Lage syndrome and from this procedure resulted a boy that was uh, born um, in 2016. Uh, so as I said this procedure was proposed to prevent the transmission of mitochondrial diseases but we believe it could also play an important role in the treatment of infertility problems related to poor oocyte quality because as I said this procedure allows us to replace 
the all cytoplasm of poor quality oocytes and because in the cytoplasm there are many factors that seem to be important to promote the embryo development by replacing the entire cytoplasm we could uh, eventually increase or enhance the quality of these oocytes to develop. So this is the reason or this was the hypothesis of the project that we started some years ago and we started with a proof of concept in the mouse model where we shown that um, by transferring the meiotic spindle from one oocyte to another in an hybrid mouse strain we were able to 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 show that uh, uh, the technique was technically feasible without impairing the further development of these oocytes after the constructing uh, reconstruction also, then, uh, knowing that the technique was uh, feasible, we decided to test it in a mouse strain, the New Zealand Black. It's a mouse strain that has an intrinsic uh, uh, reproductive uh, problem, and so most of the embers are rest in vitro. So what we've seen, what we've shown, was that by transferring the meiotic spindle from this uh, uh, strain of oocytes into a cytoplasm. From, uh, from this hybrid strain, we were able to overcome this embryo development arrest seen in, in this uh, sensitive mouse strain. From 5% blastocyst in the control group, we could increase the blastocyst development up to 50%, so 10 times increase in blastocyst formation rates when doing this procedure. Also, we've seen that these embryos that were generated were able to develop to, uh, to term into very uh, efficient, in a very efficient way and um, uh, higher efficiency than the, the corresponding control group. And that the resultant mice were healthy and fertile over five generations. Also, we have seen by uh, analyzing embryos and the organs, important organs from these mice over the different generations, that the heteroplasmy levels induced by the procedure were low, or around 2 to 3 percent, and stable. And after the third generation, they were almost undetected. So, after uh, this uh, 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 large study in the mouse model, we then decided to do a translational project and validate the technique in human donor oocytes. And then we test the different conditions and after optimizing the procedure uh, in the uh, human oocyte uh, uh, model, we, we've seen that we could obtain enucleation and fusion rates uh, with the best protocols close to 100%. And then after uh, reconstructing the oocytes uh, by spindle transfer, we have seen that these oocytes showed that, uh, uh, were able to have a normal fertilization, blastocyst, and euploidy uh, rates similar to control to the control groups. Also, we have seen in this study that uh, the technique was feasible with both fresh and vitrified oocytes, but the better results were uh, obtained when the cytoplasts uh, fresh where you use it. So this was important because in the hypothetical application of this technique uh, in a clinical scenario, we could accumulate the patient's oocytes and then uh, we could use these vitrified oocytes uh, to, to, as a source of spindles to be transferred in, in oocytes from donor from donors uh, synchronized for the day of the, of the procedure. Also, we've seen in 30 embryos that we generated that we, the mitochondrial carryover levels were very low, lower than 1%, which uh, prompted us to continue our project. And the next step was uh, a pilot trial. So this translational research project in humans was conducted in collaboration with a clinic in Greece, the Institute of Life also with um, the research group from the University of Oxford of the Dr. Dagan Wells. And this uh, translational project was authorized by the Greek uh, Authority of Assisted Reproduction. We, approved, we obtained uh, approval from the IRB of the Maternity Hospital, also obtained informed consent from all the donors and patients participating in the study. 
and uh, all experiments were carried out at the Institute of Life in Greece. And every three months we have been delivering uh, progress update reports to the Greek National Authority to maintain them updated about um, the status of the project. And also because the pilot trial uh, was a, uh, it's, it's, uh, well, te this technique is a, uh, is uh, is new and is uh, is still experimental. All the treatments uh, were offered for free, uh, uh, free of charge to all patients in, that were implanted in this trial. So the trial was registered in this English uh, registry, and the inclusion criteria included a woman uh, under 40 years old. Uh, that have been diagnosed with infertility problems uh, associated, associated to uh, embryo development arrest, uh, attributed to poor oocyte quality, and we selected only patients that have passed through several previous IVF failed attempts without success. As an exclusion criteria, we uh, decided not to include women, uh, sorry, over 40 years old, as well as couples diagnosed with severe myofactor uh, infertility. So the target number of participants was 25. And here I show you a video where to exemplify how the, uh, sorry, this is, I'm going to play the video here. Oops, here. Yeah. So this is a video of how the enucleation is performed. Uh, this is done in an inverted microscope with polarized light that allows us to see the refrigerants of the meiotic spindle. And here is another video of the reconstruction uh, process. This is uh, performed with the help of a laser that allows us to perform a small cut in the zona pellucida and through this cut we introduce the karyoplast that contains the meiotic spindle in the perivitelin space of, of the enucleated oocyte from the donor and after a few minutes this karyoplast is fused uh, to the cytoplast. So the first case that we performed was this one in this patient with 32 years old. Uh, it was a low responder with a severe endometriosis. It was a patient that had been operated uh, two times and had four previous IVF attempts uh, without success. So we collected three uh, oocytes in different stimulation cycles that were vitrified and then they were warm. Two of them were uh, survived to the vitrification process. We were able to perform a spindle transfer in these two oocytes and we obtained one blastocyst. This blastocyst resulted to be chromosomally normal and had a less than 1% uh, mitochondrial carryover. So we decided to transfer this blastocyst and it resulted into a normal pregnancy. Performed all prenatal tests and amniocentesis possible which uh, demonstrated it was a normal pregnancy. We also evaluated or analyzed the mitochondrial DNA in amniotic fluid and in the biopsied cells. And as we show here, uh, uh, the mitochondrial DNA was uh, similar to the mitochondrial DNA of the donor and different uh, to the mitochondrial DNA of the patient. And then the uh, DNA fingerprint uh, printing uh, evaluations showed that the nuclear genome uh, in, the, in the embryo and in the amniotic fluid was uh, uh, genetically re related to the father and the mother and different from the donor. So it was a, another demonstration that these embryos were uh, resultant from uh, uh, the, 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 the spindle transfer procedure. So the, as a result of this pregnancy, we uh, obtained uh, the first uh, uh, boy. Uh, it was a, 
a boy that was born in April last year uh, with almost uh, three kilograms and 50 centimeters. It's a healthy boy that is now almost one year and uh, this boy has been, this baby has been uh, followed up uh, following a program that was established with the Pediatrics Hospital and all the information collected from this follow-up is uh, registered in this, um, uh, in this uh, electronic um, application that we have created to uh, track all the babies that uh, are conceived uh, as a result of this uh, technique. A part of this case, we have another one that has uh, resulted also in another uh, baby. In this case, was a, a girl that was born last November and it's now over uh, three year, three months and it's also healthy. We have collected samples from the placenta, from uh, umbilical cord, so all the heteroplasmid levels and genetic molecular analysis are being performed to follow up this uh, in this case as well. So these two previous cases, as well as the most of the cases that we have done, we started with a very few oocytes, so we couldn't we were not able to 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 do a, a proper uh, control group. However, we have this other case that I'm going to show now. It's a case from a, a patient with a polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it was uh, 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 we have obtained in the first stimulated stimulated cycle 21 metaphase 2 oocytes that were vitrified. However, none of them survived when we warmed them maybe because of the poor quality of these oocytes. So we decided then to uh, stimulate this patient again, and we obtained 16 metaphase 2 oocytes that at the same day, or on the same day as uh, zonar oocytes. And this, from these 16 oocytes uh, from the patient, uh, nine of them were assigned to the to this meiotic spindle transfer group while uh, seven metaphase 2 oocytes were assigned to the control group. And it is interesting this case because I, and I wanted to share this with you because in the spindle transfer group, we obtained four blastocysts that were uh, biopsied and two of them were deployed. So while in the control group we performed under exactly the same culture conditions, we were not able to obtain any blastocysts. Most of the embryos arrested, as uh, we had seen in the previous uh, cycles from this patient. So uh, one of these blastocysts was transferred as well, and we have now a pregnancy, and it is in its uh, 23rd weeks of gestation. So in total, we have conducted a spindle transfer already into 25 patients. Uh, they had an average age of 37 years old, and the average uh, number of previous IVF cycles uh, without success in these patients was 5.6. Uh, we used a mean number of 4.4 oocytes for spindle transfer per patient, and in these oocytes we were able to Perform successful, successfully a spindle transfer in 91% of the oocytes. From these, 76% were correctly fertilized. And from these fertilized oocytes, 60% developed into good quality blastocysts. Uh, these were biopsied, and 50% of them uh, were euploid. So for now, uh, we have transferred nine embryos into eight patients, and we obtained uh, five pregnancies. One of them, unfortunately, uh, resulted in a miscarriage at six uh, weeks. So uh, by now, we had two full-term uh, uh, pregnancies, as I explained already, and two uh, pregnancies that are ongoing. And we have still eight patients uh, that have not been transferred yet, but they have uh, euploid, at least one euploid blastocyst. So in total, uh, from the 25 cases that we have performed, only in four of them we were not able to obtain fertilized oocytes or blastocyst development. 
uh, we were uh, we obtained at least one good quality blastocyst in 21 uh, cases and in 16 of them uh, uh, at least one of these uh, blastocysts good quality that was uh, biopsied uh, was uh, euploid. Uh, for the moment, of course, uh, this is still an experimental procedure, but uh, the, the results, as I have shown, are quite promising because uh, uh, this is uh, uh, still a pilot trial. We need to uh, go on with the uh, with, um, with, uh, validation of this technique. And this is still an experimental procedure, and according to this uh, nice publication from the interest group, of the ethics law and uh, uh, safety and quality in art from ESRE. Uh, they explain how is the best way to do these translational projects into how, until they have been considered established uh, to clinical treatment. For now, we have uh, shown in animals that the technique is safe. So we have done these experiments in mice and followed the mice over five generations. Uh, we have also shown that in the preclinical validation in human donor oocytes, that the oocytes, one, once they are reconstructed, they are able to have a normal fertilization, uh, an embryo development, and blastocyst formation rates as uh, controls and without altering the uh, aneuploidy rates. Also, we have seen in this pilot trial that was performed in this uh, very well-selected uh, patient court uh, that by now the technique is uh, considered uh, safe. Uh, of course, all the procedures were approved and we obtained all the consents to, to perform these treatments. And because it was a it was a, a it is a new technique and experimental procedure, and none of the patients were charged by the, for the treatment. So based on the evidence that we have uh, up to now, uh, we can say that the maternal spindle transfer does not adversely affect the spindle apparatus or early embryo development as long as all the steps of the protocol are correctly uh, optimized. Actually, if the technique is performed in all sites of uh, compromised quality and the spindle is transferred into a more competent cytoplast, we are able to obtain a better uh, blastocyst formation uh, rate and uh, without comprom compro compromising the uploidy rates of the oocyte. And also, uh, this can be performed with very low ateroplasmy levels, lower than 1% in most of the cases. Uh, also, the pilot trial results uh, indicate that uh, the oocytes that result from the procedure are uh, able to implant and to sustain a healthy pregnancy to term. Of course, we need to collect more information and we need to conduct more carefully controlled pilot trials to have more insights uh, about uh, the feasibility and the safety of the technique for clinical applications. Uh, we believe that the procedure has a, 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 it's very promising and has a, a huge potential and could be also advantageous for the donors because the resultant children would not be genetically related to them, and then therefore we could reduce the psychological or uh, an anonymity concerns that are usually um, associated to convention, uh, conventional oocyte uh, donation programs. So uh, it, this is all for now. I'd like to thank everyone that has been involved in this project, as well as all of uh, uh, all of you that have been uh, listening to this uh, online congress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nuno, for a very stimulating presentation. Thanks. Uh, I, have, I have one question for you. Um, how many clinics are doing this technology around the world? How many babies were born? And what do you think might be the side effects if, and how can we detect 
you know, side effects from the process in order to stop it on time. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for your questions. Uh, as far as I know, uh, well, um, there is uh, uh, our group that is conducting this uh, technique uh, um, under the approval of the Greek National Committee in Greece. And then there is another group uh, in Ukraine uh, that is led by Dr. Zhang. Uh, but I think the procedure that they are performing is not spindle transfer, it's uh, a pronuclear transfer. And these are the two groups uh, that I'm aware that I have been conducting this procedure uh, for the treatment of infertility, problems related to uh, oocyte quality. And then there is uh, in the UK the, a group in Newcastle that are also uh, exploring the effectiveness of the technique to prevent the transmission of mitochondrial diseases. Uh, uh, however, uh, I'm not aware of their clinical results. I'm not sure uh, uh, the status of. I, I have no information about the status of the of the of the project in terms of clinical results. Um, in regards to your other question about the, the safety concerns about this technique, of course, like um, uh, uh, in all other uh, techniques um, in IVF, we need to go step by step. And because if this is a new uh, procedure, we need to collect uh, as much uh, information as possible about uh, these cases. In our uh, group, what we have been doing is, as I explained, we have uh, been uh, doing all the follow-ups of the, of the babies and conducting all the genetic analysis that are possible at the moment to gather more information about the heteroplasmy levels that are induced by the procedure. For now, we have two babies that were born. They are one, it's almost one year. Another one, it's almost uh, four, uh, four months. And uh, both uh, I have been followed up and they showed to be uh, completely healthy. So our, our plan and our uh, idea is to continue following them up to collect all the information and publish the information that we've been collected all over this time uh, so that everyone is aware about um, about um, the, the 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 technique okay thank you very much we need to stop here because we have to keep the time frame for the lecture and we leave your email address for another 48 hours if any of the participants would like to approach you directly and ask you questions so okay. thank you very much. Thanks to you thank for you. the invitation. Thank you. Hello. This is Dr. Zhang from New Hope Fertility Center. I'm saying hello to you all around the world. I would like to spend some moments to update you all about what is going on in the so-called nuclear transfer technology in human reproduction. So we are in the very exciting moment in human reproduction. One way we have a crisis of fertility because overall speaking in many countries the population actually is a drop. But other way around, we have so many new technology potentially can benefit mankind, not only in fertility, but also in general health. Let's quickly look at what we have done and uh, where we are heading to. So we starting this nuclear transfer technology using the words called her IVF program. And a her IVF program meaning that human egg rejuvenation. We all know 
in vitro fertilization was successfully performed, and the first live birth baby was in 1978. And uh, now it's 2020, so almost 42 years ago. And uh, in 2000, in 1983, we know how to freeze embryos, and very quickly, 1990, we started doing pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. 1992, we had sperm injection into the egg, so-called ICSI, and 2016, we had first world live birth baby using three parents baby technology, which basically is a nuclear transfer technology. Between 1992 to 2016, we also have many other exciting developments, such as assist, assisted hatching and testicular sperm fertilization, cytoplasma injection, partially to improve mitochondrial DNA quality, to have a life, to improve the fertility. So this is a quick milestone in the human uh, reproduction. Nuclear transfer technique, as the name pointed out, it's a transfer of the different kind of a nuclear into uh, somatic cells. So we can inject the nuclear from the germinal vesicle, mass phase two spindle, and a pronuclear. While we can accomplish pregnancy in almost all different kind of uh, fertility challenges in human, only one obstacle still there, how to accomplish pregnancy in the couples due to egg quality issue. And most commonly, the issue happened with advanced maternal age. In search for solution, her IVF was invented. For the patient who are 35 years or younger, has done more than three IVF cycles with cleavage arrest or have a hard time to make the blastocyst. I'm sure in our practice or in your practice, you all see these kind of patients and clearly have nothing to do with the stimulation protocol, but fundamentally something wrong with egg, mainly in the cytoplasma. This may help from the nuclear transfer to change the environment. For the ladies with advanced maternal age, due to aging of the cytoplasma, may help. Also for the ladies who had a genetic mutation in the tube 8 or in a genetic mutation in the mitochondria, they can all benefit from exchange with the new fresh cytoplasma to accomplish pregnancy. For the lady more than 41 years old, where well, can benefit from her IVF, this is open for discussion and is an ongoing research project. Pronuclear transfer was first started in 2003 after fertilization of the fer fertilization of the egg, transfer the male and the female pronucleus. And this has produced a live birth baby in 2017. Second technology is a spindle nuclear transfer. Spindle nuclear transfer, as we displayed before, is a technique to remove the spindle nuclear 
which where the DNA genetic material state in the metaphase 2 egg. We can take this spin the nuclear out and transfer to a recipient's egg, which here we label as the donor eggs. The donor's DNA has already been removed. Now you have a reconditioned egg, which we integrated. This is a donor egg cytoplasm with the patient nuclear. This technology has been proved very useful for the lady at the age of 35 to 38 with a repetitive in vitro fertilization failure, including cleavage arrest or recurrent implantation failure, even the embryo made to blastocyst. Of course, also including maturation failure, the egg never reached to metaphase two. And this spindle technology is very beneficial and to show how the spindle transfer and this showed the uh, nucleus, pronuclear, male, female pronuclear. Another technology is using polar body. As we know, polar body, generally speaking, in human, it's a degenerating material. And this genetic material carry mirror image DNAs as the spindle DNA in the egg. By doing polar body transfer, we have two applications. This is a polar body. After I spread out, insert into a recipient egg whose polar body um, already been removed and the cytoplasm, the spindle nuclear also being removed. Then we inject the polar body direct into the egg, or we can do electrofusion. Now you have this polar body spindle with the DNA integrated into the recipient's eggs. This technique particularly working well with a lady who have all such maturation failure. And just show you one patient here. We went through one, two, three, four, five, six cycles, and she making larger number of the metaphase two eggs. However, when we check on, on these eggs, they don't have a prop spindle, and after ICSI with a very low fertilization rate, and none of embryo ever make to blastocyst. So, we can accomplish about 27% of blastocyst formation from the polar body transfer. And we do have one patient had a normal embryo through this polar body transfer. Unfortunately, it was a chemical pregnancy. The terminal vesicle transfer is a still under investigation. The theory is working very well to take the germinal vesicle from immature patient egg and exchange it with the cytoplasm from the donor and for undergo in vitro maturation and uh, in vitro fertilization and to, to, to obtain the blastocyst stage embryo. However, so far this technique is still not clinically applicable due to three factors. Number one, technically it's very challenging. Number two, we are still not proved that a GV transfer can rescue the spindle anomalies. Number three, still have a maturation issue to overcome. So this is only currently and still ongoing research project. So for now, in conclusion, nuclear transfer technology 
for application in her IVF has great potential and 13 healthy live births has been produced in the world using this technology by transfer spindles and the pronucleus. Numerous healthy, normal looking blood cells have been obtained by doing geminal vesicle transfer and a polar body transfer. However, how efficient and how useful in accomplished pregnancy by polar body and the polar body transfer and the geminal vesicle transfer, this open for follow-up results. And also for metaphase two DNA spindle, which our colleagues in Ukraine also had a healthy results. So this is a metaphase two egg, which is a polar body here and a spindle here with a, another half of the DNA. However, if we do metaphase one transfer, we can only move this part, or only move this egg part and to do the nuclear transfer. And we will keep you informed the progress of the research. And uh, thanks for sending the questions. First question is a great question. And this is uh, ongoing questions. And we had these questions for the last 100 years since the very first day in vitro fertilization was invented. The question is, uh, uh, do you have a, a efficient way to, to do the in IVM, in vitro maturation of geminal vesicle stage X? As a matter of fact, people remember when uh, our colleague from Korea had a first live birth baby from in vitro mature egg. It was a general prize winning paper in ASRM many, many, many uh, years ago when I was uh, a medical student. So that just tell you how old this question and how important this question. And the answer to this question is yes and no. Yes means that we do have a modified in vitro maturation system, which give us the best in vitro maturation rate so far as compared with all the available culture medium. Uh, the answer is no, meaning that we still need more data to produce more life births to prove that uh, this in vitro maturation system is uh, compatible with the in vivo maturation. But for now, definitely it's not compatible. But our system definitely can produce the uh, best quality GVA and to reach to metaphase two to give the life birth baby. So the system, including that uh, the geminal vesicle stage X and with uh, autogalous humerus cells, which is very, very important. And we also need to add in some additive which will reduce in vitro uh, oxygenation to reduce the oxygen tension, and that will significantly improve the maturation rate. And we are compile our data, hopefully we can publish it soon. But the bottom line is that a simple in vitro culture environment without any cumulus involvement, you have very poor results, number one. Number two, simply add cumulus cell, it will not work properly either, and you have to have some kind of mechanism to allow this cumulus cell to be attached to the donor to get a good results. So this is a great question, and this question itself, we can have another webinar in six weeks. We're gonna talk about the update on in vitro growth, in vitro maturation of human oocytes for clinical use. Let me just extend this question a little bit further. We have been, and many of our colleagues have been freezing many, many ovarian tissues. So far, the major application of these ovarian tissues is transplant back to the patient when they're ready to become pregnant after chemotherapy or other kind of uh, treatment. 
And the problem with that is you may bring the cancer cell back. And so in majority of cases, if you, for the uncle case, you really ideally want to mature this ovarian tissue to produce eggs and make the healthy life, uh, healthy embryos to transfer back to get babies rather than transplant this tissue back. So IVM is very important. And there are the uh, great advancement in grow the ovarian tissue and to accomplish the final maturation. So we will have another webinar in six weeks. We can discuss the only cup, the top is about the IVM. The old story as old as IVF meaning in vitro maturation is a very old, important topic as in vitro fertilization. Thank you for this question. Let's go down to the next question. The next question is about, uh, do we use an electrofusion method to integrate the nucleus? That's another very good question. The, whoever the person reads this question must be the expert in the nuclear transfer. And there are, there are two different kind of approaches to integrate the transfer the DNA materials into the host egg. Doesn't matter it's a, a geminovesco stage egg. Doesn't matter it's a metaphase one stage egg. Doesn't matter it's a metaphase two egg or it's a fertilized egg or zygotes. You always have to deal with the, the last part of the process that allow the DNA, DNA material to integrate into the egg. Just for the audience who are not familiar with the nuclear transfer, why can you just inject this nuclear material into the egg like ICSI? Why you have to go through such a complicated way to allow this DNA contained material to be slowly integrated into the host of the egg? Because the size of the nuclear usually is about 15 to 25 micrometer, which is five times bigger than the diameter of the sperm head. If you use a, such a big pipette to inject this nuclei into the egg, the egg will be lysed and uh, degenerate right away. So you have to use in some kind of way, allow the membrane to fuse, to allow the transfer the DNA material to integrate into the host egg. There are two approach, virus or virus protein, or use electrofusion. Virus is the easy way, clean way, easy way to perform, but it may not be very quote quote clean. And in the clinical case, the patient may not like the idea of their egg being material with the integration of a virus or even with the virus products. Secondly, while this is easy to fusion, our study show that it may not necessarily keep the quality of the egg as well as the second method, which is electrofusion. Electrofusion is much clean. You use a high voltage electric current within a very, very low period of time of almost like 0 0.03 seconds, which you basically use zap the egg and increase the fusion membrane. It's a clean method. And if you done properly, it's a very successful procedure, have least effect on the egg. However, the shortcoming of electrofusion is number one. The condition is very hard to control with the patient have a very limited number of material. You probably don't have a luxury to test many times to find the right condition for the electrofusion. And number two, in certain stage of the egg, for example, at the metaphase two egg stage, you, if you want to do the nuclear transfer, the metaphase two egg is a highly active moving egg, very unstable. And electrofusion also rely on the influx of calcium, which we all know can activate the oocytes. So during the integration of the nuclear, the oocyte cytoplasma may be, may be prematurely uh, activated. That definitely can compromise the integrity, the cell cycle of the eggs and it may cause asynchronization of fertilization, it may increase the arrest of the embryo at the early stage. So this is a pros and cons of virus 
and electrofusion appro uh, approach. Thank you for the two excellent questions. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Okay. So Milton, are you here? Yes. So again, after a very exciting um, full day of uh, talk and lectures, which were very interesting and educational, uh, we have both again the pleasure to close the first online Congress. Uh, I think that it was exciting to have all these lectures, visiting the exhibition, learning from our sponsors about the new products. The exhibition will stay one week longer open. The recording will stay on the internet for another few days on the website of IVF Worldwide. And we are really now started planning for the next one. And I really, really very much like to thank you all for being with us today and supporting this initiative. And Milton, would you like to close and say a few words? Yes, thank you, Seth. Uh, first, I would like to thank all of you to register and join us. I believe this is has to be the largest first online IVF Congress in reproductive medicine. I think that all of you are satisfied. I trust that you have a good experience and we look forward to organizing more of the same for all of you. So here is Milton Lung from Hong Kong and Seth Soon from Israel to say thank you, goodbye, and see you again. And keep safe at this time of global health crisis.